During WWDC 2022, we were shown what's new with iPadOS 16. However, I find it really strategic that Apple placed iPadOS 16 way at the end of the announcement after iOS 16, macOS Ventura, and everything in between. I think that is mostly because how iPadOS 16 is a combination between iOS 16 and also macOS Ventura. Hmm. In this video, I'm going to highlight 5 different features about iPadOS 16 that caught my attention. So for this test, I'm using iPadOS 16 Beta 1 on the 5th generation iPad Air with M1 chip to showcase all of these features and there might be some bugs here and there and everything shown in this video may still change before iPadOS 16 is released to the public. I want to quickly highlight that the iPad OS 16 doesn't get the new customizable lock screen that iOS 16 gets. I don't know why, but we do have a new font for the clock on the lock screen. So I guess that's better than nothing. Also the weather app looks absolutely stunning on the larger screen of the iPad Air. Now let's jump into the 5 new features that caught my attention. And starting off with number 1 is files. I think in a way, the new Files app on the iPadOS 16 is becoming more like Finder on macOS. We can now view information of each item like the size of a file or an entire folder and even renaming the entire extension of that particular file too. All this can be done on iPadOS 16's file itself and keyboard shortcuts from macOS carries over as well. For example, hitting Command I to bring up the information window and then hitting Enter to rename the file and so on and so forth. I'm really appreciative of Apple's decision to keep keyboard shortcuts consistent across different operating systems. I mean, I instinctively started to use all the keyboard shortcuts that I've learned on macOS because the Files app on iPadOS 16 looks exactly the same as Finder on macOS. And number two is Stage Manager. Oh boy, I think this is a big feature update that many people are looking forward to and that is also the main reason why I installed iPadOS 16 Beta 1 and that is because I want to try this feature out for myself. So to enable this feature, we need to swipe down and get into the command center and there we have a new icon. Tap on it and Stage Manager is enabled. Granted, I think Apple made this feature for keyboard and mouse users only because most of the interface do not work with touch. Again, things might change in the final version of iPadOS 16 when it comes out, but we're only using what we have now. Once Stage Manager is enabled, the home screen looks as if nothing ever happened. However, once we open up an app, the app itself is constrained to a window and the multitasking menu jumps to the side instead. In a way, this kinda sorta feels like spaces on macOS where we can have multiple desktops at once and we can jump around between each another depending on how we arrange the apps. But I'll have to explain more about the stage manager to show you what I mean in terms of similarities. The top menu button which was originally meant for split screen options is now presenting us with three different options to control windows instead. Do we want to add or remove that particular window from this space or do we want to make this window maximized? We can also drag apps from the side to the current space too. And then we can change to another space by just tapping at the side there. But that's not all. Each individual window in a space can also be resized, granted if it supports it. You see this little outline at the bottom corner? We can drag it to resize the window according to how we like it. The window resizing also feels kinda weird since it snaps into certain sizes when it reaches the edges of the screen and the dock also automatically hides itself after reaching some threshold of the space of the window. I mean, that kind of makes the app shortcuts bar at the bottom of the iPad OS something like macOS dock, no? Hmm. And the sidebar hides itself too, depending on what size of the window we resize it to. And we'll need to use the mouse cursor to tickle out the sidebar if it ever hides itself. But after spending some time with Stage Manager, it still feels kind of weird. I still prefer split screen of apps that we've used previously and yeah, maybe Stage Manager needs some time to grow on me. We'll revisit this later in our laptop replacement video with the iPad Air 5th Gen. And thirdly is the proper external monitor support. This feature actually goes hand in hand with the Stage Manager too. Usually when we connect the iPad to an external monitor, it'll just mirror the display. But now with iPad OS 16, once we connect it to an external monitor and also the Apple Magic Keyboard, 
it will automatically transform into an external display. Granted, the external display enters stage manager mode whether you like it or not, still it works and I'm not complaining. This actually gives me a reason to carry my portable monitor with me while I'm traveling or whatnot. However, I found a few peculiar traits that you might want to know. Firstly, the iPad OS 16 only supports standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And secondly, it doesn't support any touch inputs even when we connect it to the external display that is actually touch enabled. And next up is live text. I absolutely love this feature. On macOS, we can already preview images and select text that are on images and then copy it out to the clipboard. It saves me a lot of trouble and I don't have to retype the string of characters that I want to lift off a particular image. Now, on iPad OS 16, that feature is built into the Photos app. For example, if someone took a picture of this delivery consignment note that I want to copy the tracking number out of, Traditionally, I will have to retype it, but with live text feature, I can just long press on the text and lift it up directly. I can even press this button here to automatically highlight what text can be copied directly from the image. This is just a big quality of live improvement. And number five is visual lookup. Technically, this feature is also very similar with live text, but it's for images instead of text. Take this picture for example, I can directly long press on the subject and lift it off the image and honestly I can't stop thinking about what kind of endless possibilities that this feature can bring. I frequently take pictures on our camera and then bring it to Photoshop to crop the subject out from the background. However, with this feature here, I can directly just lift it off the background. It may not be perfect but I can take the picture at a bigger aperture to isolate the background even further so that the algorithm can perform better by detecting the edges more accurately. Again, it's about convenience and I think I'm going to use this feature a lot. And it, this feature also works with super old pictures by the way. And those are the top 5 features that caught my attention when it comes to iPad OS 16. Most of these features that we've talked about are also available on either iOS 16 or macOS Ventura 2. So, what do you think about Apple's announcement during WWDC 2022? What's your favourite feature? Do let us know down in the comment section below and do subscribe as well because in the next video, we'll talk about the iPad Air being my laptop replacement. So, yeah, we'll see you there.